My name is Todd Waite. I'm a professor here at the Department of Geosciences and Natural Resource Management at Copenhagen University. One of the things that surprised me when I started working here in Copenhagen is that there hadn't been anything done on Bornholm since some very good work in the 1930s. So I thought that was an ideal opportunity. Um, a lot of what people thought up until recently was that Bornholm was similar to what we see in southern Sweden. So there were some relatively old rocks, about 1.8 billion years old, and some relatively young rocks, about 1.4 billion years. And so our work, our work has shown that this is, this is maybe more complicated than that, and everything is about 1.45 billion years old. So that's telling us that at least parts of Bornholm are not as old as we thought they were. So 1.45 billion years ago is a long time ago, and it's, it's hard to work out what the Earth and Scandinavia looked like at that time. Um, but we can use rocks and geology and granites especially to try and solve that puzzle. To get the answers out of these rocks, of course, we need to actually go and collect some rocks. So I spent a few days, one nice summer on Bornholm and collected some nice big samples like this of, of granite, and then brought them back here to the lab where um, we basically destroy them. They get crushed into little pieces and then we put them in a, in a mill and grind them up till they become a very fine powder like this, uh, uh, yeah, a flower. And then based on that, we can then separate out minerals that we're interested in to do the dating and, uh, and that sort of work. And we can also take that powder and then dissolve it using various acids, hydrofluoric acid, um, nitric acid, uh, to isolate the elements that we're interested in and analyze them on mass spectrometers. So the analyses we did, we did um, isotope analyses based on these powders, which we had dissolved. And uh, these, were, these were analyzed in on the mass spectrometer here in Copenhagen. And a lot of the age work and isotope work was also done by taking these very small zircon crystals, about 0.1 millimeters in length, and then um, shooting them with a laser, either here in Copenhagen or up in Oslo, to, uh, to date them and to get their, their isotopic compositions. And what we've found out from looking at their chemistry is that the granites on Bornholm, uh, they're what we call A-type granites, and they likely formed in some sort of a, a rifting extensional environment perhaps similar to what we see today in, um, in Africa, in the East African Rift. Then it's also hard to work out how Bornholm and Southern Scandinavia fits together with the rest of the world. And there's some reconstructions that say that, that at least Southern Scandinavia was actually sitting alongside parts of South America, a continent called Amazonia. Um, so Brazil and Venezuela and around there. And one of the very interesting things we find is that when we start looking at the geology of Amazonia, we see granites there that have very similar ke chemical characteristics and basically the same age. So it looks like Bornholm was part of South America or South America was part of Bornholm, depending on how you look at it. I first became interested in granites when I was an undergrad student in New Zealand doing field work and just being introduced to these rocks. And basically I thought, they're beautiful. They're just really nice rocks to look at. But of course, it's much more than them just being pretty rocks. Granites are quite unique rocks. Um, we only find them on Earth. We haven't found them on Mars or on the Moon or on Venus. And they seem to be very closely linked to the uniqueness of our planet, the fact that we have a plate tectonic system, the fact that we have continental crust, maybe due to the fact that we have water and maybe due to the fact that we have life. So they also tell us a lot about how the Earth has evolved and developed over its, over its life. 